Hey Turbs, okay, full of energy. Hey, what's up gardening friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I am great, beautiful day outside, giving the plants some water. Been doing some pruning on the banana trees. I've had enough questions about these banana cannas over here that I thought it'd be a good idea to just do a video on them. Instead of tucking out all the info into a vlog somewhere where people have to search for it, just nice little dedicated something about these plants. No need to get specific, just gonna say some things about the things. Great intro. These back here are the banana cannas that I wanted to talk about. There are a few things I'll go over, planting depth, cold hardiness, some characteristics. A lot of this is just going to be general canna information. And that I've realized that my banana cannas aren't really banana cannas. I mean, they are, but they aren't. We'll talk about that. But just some general canna information for people who are wondering, maybe you wanna grow them, you want some more info. I'm in zone 6A, 6B, I live right on the line. And I planted these about five, maybe six inches underground, which is on the deeper end for a canna rhizome. The rhizomes came in nice and big, chunky, healthy rhizomes. But since I'm in a zone where they're not fully hardy, cannas are generally listed as hardy, zone 7B and up, but it's not unusual to see them grown in zone six. Been growing them in zone six my entire life. I see them all over the place here in St. Louis. Even see them in parts of zone five. The key to winter survival is just making sure that they're in a spot where it's not horribly cold in the winter, so a good microclimate, and getting those rhizomes down a little bit deeper. General canna planting depth is like two to five inches, somewhere in there, just, just below the surface of the soil. But because, like I said, they're only marginally hardy here, I wanted to get them down as deep as I could because that makes it just easier to overwinter those rhizomes in the ground less freeze the further down you go, especially when you pile mulch on top of them, which is important. These get a good 12 inches or so of mulch on top of them during the winter time. Just come down the ground, put a big bag of mulch on top of them. And the other advantage that depth for these is that this is a variety that gets rather tall, one of the larger types of cannas. So I wanted there to be some more stability down there around where they come up out of the ground because when I've grown the cannas, the banana cannas in the past, I've had had issues with them flopping around and being flimsy because they, I didn't have them planted deep enough. The soil is also heavily amended with compost. I go in with cotton burr. I like the land and sea compost from Espoma, almost had proven winners. And then uh, it's a manure, those sorts of things, basically whatever organic materials I can get my hands on. I get down there around the roots and this is a soil that drains very, very well. So that's important for winter survival. It's, you don't want it to be a soil that's gonna be saturated and just turned to an ice block when it freezes outside. Now ideally they'll be planted deep enough and have enough mulch on top of them that that's not even going to be an issue. But where I live, we'll have winters sometimes where it never drops below five degrees Fahrenheit. And then we'll have winters where it might hit 13 degrees below zero. Just never know what you're going to get. This particular area is rather warm, so that's not something I really worry about with these. But again, it's all just, just to be safe. They're very heavy feeders. Another reason to keep that compost in there and going with some slow release. Sometimes plant tone works well and just general all-purpose fertilizer. They also, they seem to really enjoy the sea kelp and liquid seaweed type of fertilizers as well. Pardon the dogs in the background. As I mentioned, cannas generally considered fully hardy zone 7B and up, and that's going to depend on the species, but most of them that should be just fine. They should be okay with that in zone six. You just gotta protect them or lift them up, trim the roots off, and uh, store them away as a dormant bulb in a dark, cool, dry place for the winter time. Plant them again when you're away from freezing temperatures. Or take them inside as a house plant. I don't I would not want this as a house plant. Just because there's something about them that just screams spider mites to me. Just that foliage looks like it would just be a snack for the bugs. It's not something I want to try out. But I've heard that it's an option, so Comment down below if that's something you've done if you've kept the cannas growing all year round in your house. So it's something I am interested in, just not with a variety that gets like eight feet tall. Talking specifically now about the banana cannas, which are and are not what's right here in front of us. Well, first, let me describe to you a banana canna. That's canna musifolia. Musa being banana, musa, and then canna. Canna musifolia, folia leaves, leaves like a banana tree. Banana cannas generally get anywhere from 10 to 14 feet high. They have very long leaves on them, large leaves, banana-like leaves on them that are green with a reddish purple tint to the outside. And they normally have a larger gap between the leaves along the stem that comes up from the ground and they rarely flower. And when they flower, it's pretty insignificant. Just a little, little like red thing that 
not a big deal. It's not something you grow for the flowers. Okay, now did that description sound like what we're looking at here? In some ways, yes. There's a lot of spacing between the leaves along the stems. The leaves are very large and banana-like, as you can see on here. But the flowers, prolific, which I noticed last summer too, and I was like, well, that's weird. I've never remembered my banana canvas flowering. I hadn't grown them in a very long time. I lost mine, well, I mentioned being 13 degrees below zero, that's when I lost my banana cannas several years ago, and when I found them online last year, I was just like, great, I'm gonna plant some more, and didn't even think about the fact that these aren't, these aren't them. This is someone else. I don't know who this is. Well, that's not really true. I do know. So this is the red banana canna. I do think they're beautiful, but they are okay, 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 okay. It changed my angles up. I wanted to get in close, but there are a ton of wasps living inside of there. They weren't very happy about me being in there trying to get a close shot. I'm sorry. Just have to enjoy them from further back. I tried it, rolled the dice. They weren't having it. So these are the red banana cannas. Apparently that's a thing. If you just look up banana canna, you're probably going to mostly find these where they have the red stems and that beautiful foliage that I'll try and get some better shots of at some point and put it over here so you can see it. The foliage on them reminds me a lot of the Nset Morelli the red obsidian bananas. Very colorful, a delight to have back here in the garden. The more sun they get, I would imagine the more reddish tint that they'll have on them. These get late morning sun through the afternoon. So these get a good six to eight hours of sun a day right here. Very hot, bright baking sun in this corner. It's the flowers though. The banana cannas I used to have, one, they got taller than this. They were more lanky. They were green with a red outline on the leaves. And when they flowered, it was just like, it was just a little thing. It wasn't something you notice very often. And they easily would get up to about where the bottom of that gutter is right there. So these are probably, I would say, about seven and a half to eight feet tall right here. Maybe closer to eight feet. I'm sure taller if I were to count the flower stalks that are coming up from the top. And that's still a few feet short of what you would get with the regular green Canna musifolia. So that's just something I wanted to make sure to talk about because there's been some confusion when I've said these are banana cannas and people look for banana cannas and then this is mostly what shows up, but then the green ones also show up. I am seeing these listed uh, more often than not now as banana canna red or red banana canna. It's, a, it's, you know, with the plants, sometimes the naming just becomes a mess. I haven't been able to find any information about any changes in the cultivar. I'm pretty sure it's just a different cultivar. The only thing I can figure. For example, the green banana canna, it's well, one, hopefully I have pictures up here on the screen. Like, just look at it, right? I mean, look at how freaking huge those things are. That's not this. Looks very different. Both awesome plants. And really, I actually think I prefer this red over the other one. It was something I didn't know I wanted, but I have it now and I'm good with it. I like them, especially the flowers. It's nice from inside the window. Those little red tubes will open up and the gingers will be flowering here pretty soon along with them. The hummingbirds will be out there and butterflies and honeybees. It's gonna be really nice to look at. I will make sure in the future when I refer to my banana cannas in my videos, particularly the garden tours, refer to them as the red banana cannas and not just banana cannas. I don't want to be part of the problem there with the weird naming of the plants and confusion trying to figure things out. So that's what's going on with these. Easy to grow, lots of fun, big, huge, <laughs> big, huge, beautiful, bold, colorful foliage. Has a nice contrast to it. I'm liking the red. I think it looks nice. I didn't mention like one of the most important things with cannas. They like water lots and lots of water. You can put them in your ponds marginally. They don't want to be down more than a few inches below the water surface. In the garden, it's not like they're just going to shrivel up if the soil gets a little bit dry, at least not once they're established. But I do have these set up on drip, so they get regular irrigation. This entire spot does. These are all plants that like a lot of moisture over here, so things stay pretty moist, which is, that's, that's what cannas want. They want things nice and moist. And talk about prolific, right? These were just three rhizomes planted last year. And I want to say each rhizome probably, I'm, I, don't, I didn't count, but I would imagine they only put up probably three to four stalks off of each rhizome. And I'm not going to try and count how many that are in there. There's, okay, I will. There's between 15 and 20 and more coming up from the ground. That's a big improvement. And they're spreading. There was just a clump here, one right there. You can kind of see those main three in those spots, but there's more starting to come up over here towards the front and back over towards the sides. They're doing what cannas do. If you live in a place where these grow as evergreens, they don't have a winter dormancy, then I would imagine they could fill in a spot very, very 
very quickly. It only takes a few years here in zone six when we fill in a spot very quickly. And that's another thing I should clarify on when I say zone six, that's just referring to winter minimums being between zero and what is that, negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit during the winter time. That is important. It's good to know, but what's more important to know is that they love heat. So there could be people watching her in zone six, but maybe you live around the Great Lakes further up north and don't really have hot summers. The Canada's, they're pretty reliable plants. If you were to fertilize them enough, I think that they would still bounce back from the ground, especially if they were mulched heavily. But it, without the heat, sometimes they don't do much. They like it hot, hot and humid. That's their jam. They appreciate it. All right, that's going to do it. Comment down below. Tips, tricks, suggestions with your cannas. Favorite varieties. Yes, do that. Comment. Favorite varieties. There are so many different types of cannas. Lots and lots of fun ones to grow. All different sizes with different shapes on their leaves and different color patterns on their leaves and some really neat flowers on a lot of them. What do you like? I think one of my other favorites is probably the pink sunburst, but I never see it for sale like ever. And whenever I ordered it, it ends up being one of the Phasians, the Tropic Canna, which is not the same thing. And the Stuttgarts, the variegated foliage. That's a really nice one. Let us all know what your favorites are. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.